What's going on? We have a January trading recap video. Let's get into it. So we made approximately $410.72 in the month of January. Journal tracked all here on Tradezilla. Uh, let me pop myself away so you can see the bottom of the chart. We can see some red days on Friday. That might be a recurring theme. We'll get into the data in a second. And uh, yes, yeah, so this is all on Tradezilla. And I trade recap every trade that I take. Um, we are trading right now on a 25K account. Uh, we technically will be adding some other things. I got some stuff to, I'm testing out and planning in the background, but that's what we're doing uh, as we speak uh, through a prop firm. Now, this is some of the biggest takeaways I want to get into first before we get into the nitty gritty data, which is going to be the best part of the video. So stick around for that. It's coming soon. And I think it's where I have the most insight and I'm going to learn the most about what what my strategy is telling me which is important to take into the month of February. So biggest takeaway, not a massively profitable month. However, seeing a green number and this win percentage, 46.15%. I had 26 trades. I won 12. I lost 14 and I was green. That in my opinion, it's not really an opinion. It's what I know now myself, but is that's real trading. What you see on this platform and other platforms from traders, it's fucking bullshit. Most of that stuff. And when I say most, I'm not discounting some of the people out there who are legit because those who are out there who are legit are badass. Like those people put in the work, they're at a place where they're making a lot of money and they want to sell shit, go right ahead because they're legit. But for the people who are not legit and don't show you the shit, hide the numbers, they're not actually profitable, fuck you. <laughs> and I mean that because you're just leading people on and not actually, I don't want to say helping. It's not the right word, but you're, you're not doing a service to the community. And that's one of my biggest, the biggest things that I'm hopefully here to do in 2024. And that's what I want to do more of is just be 100% real in my trading experience. Call it a trading journey. Yeah, it's cheesy. Yeah, I get, I get it. But what is it actually like? versus what people tell you. Cause I was just the same. I was looking at these people who are watching these, oh, I never lose this 80%, 75%. And I know you six to one risk rewards left and right. Yeah, my asshole doesn't happen all the time. Give me a sample size of 100, 200, 500 trades and show me your, your six to one average risk reward and show me your 90% win rates. I'm waiting for it. It's not real. So, okay. Biggest takeaways, 46%. Sorry for that. 46% win rate, average win loss, beauty. For me, that's great. For me, for you, this might not be good. For someone, it's all relevant to you, your trading, the way you see things, how it works for you. This number is unique to you. These numbers are unique to you and they based after you have a sample size and you've been doing it for a long enough time. Yeah. I've said in the past, like, ah, oh, I would love for my win rate to be up to like 65%. I'm like, oh, I think I can get there. I say that I think I can get there because I feel like I should be able to get there. If things, if I'm really kind of just all the wheels are spinning, right? Oiled up, we're lubed up and we're good to go. But somehow we always end up in this 45 to 55 area. It seems like if we end up at the end of the month, we end up in that area. We can go back every month by month and maybe I'll do that after I've had, you know, a little more data and see my win rates. But I made a video recently about uh, the past like nine months and my average win rate was 48% over 400 and something trades. So I mean, like that's just the reality. It is what it is. So those are the biggest takeaways off the top. Let's get in to the reports. So uh, that'll be in a second. Uh, trade by day. This is something that I just, you know, want to touch on quickly. We've traded the most on Fridays, and that was my worst day by far. Good to note, because today's Thursday, when I'm making this video, tomorrow's Friday. 
huh, <laughs> let's take it uh, let's take it easy. Let's make sure we're looking for good quality stuff Friday, right? And there's no reason to, for whatever reason, this, this, this is something that this is going to change. It's not always going to be the same. Just as of late, I mean, not as of late, this eight trades, I haven't won a single trade on Friday. I've literally made $0 in profit on Friday and I've lost 612. So if I just didn't trade Fridays this past month, we'd be up a grand. <laughs> Which is kind of funny, but whatever. Um, okay, that trade duration is interesting because this is something that, well, no, because it's going by intraday. So not really very useful. Oh yeah, back to that overview page. This is what I wanted to pull up. Uh, average hold time for winning trades, five days, 17 hours and 20 minutes. Yes, I was swing trading a lot. Simple. Average hold time for losers a day, six hours. So that that's going to usually be lower because stops hit faster when I'm taking profits, I'm scaling out. Yes, we like to ride things if we can, if we get opportunities. And we did. Uh, largest loss, 159 this month or that month because now it's February as I'm making the video. Uh, largest profit was 405 in January. That's good on one, one trade. That's good. So uh, you can see that aligns well with Losers smaller, winners bigger. Simple. And it's not like and people get caught up in this. Like you, it's not, it's not like, you know, you have to win six X your, you know. No, like it's not like that. In reality, right? Because when you get into that game of like, oh, I have to win more, right? I, on these winners, I gotta make them big. Well, then you could miss out on gains because you just weren't taking profits. When you got the move in your direction, then you just didn't take any profits because you wanted more, 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 because it had to meet. So there's a scaling factor that plays into it. And and you find the, the happy medium. The happy medium might be a 1.5 to 1 average risk reward, meaning that you look to risk a dollar to make 150 on every trade. And that's it. And if you can net yourself a 50% win rate, you're good, dude. Like you're good. Like you're totally good. That's great. Do that. Massive sample size. Do it consistently. Do the same shit every single day. It's boring as shit. Yes, I understand. But the bank, your bank account won't be boring. Your investment portfolio, as you're pulling profits and tossing it away, it won't be boring. Paying off debts, like it won't be boring. Okay? The actual actions you have to take are boring. The dollar amounts will come to make it not boring, I guess, to the outside, but the actual actions are boring and they should be boring and that's how trading actually is. Because it allows you to do it Long term, without the highs and lows of the emotions, which are going to pull you down from consistent profitability and having an understanding to your numbers and just trading your shit. That's it. So that's another second rant. Um, third, uh, no, well, <laughs> hopefully there's no third rant. Um, so let's go top ten. So these are the top ten. Well, just top ten stocks. I didn't really trade a lot of stocks and stuff. Uh, AMD, Bitcoin, Nvidia, Berkshire Hathaway, and Meta were the, the green babies, and then the rest we were red. Um, so nothing crazy, nothing, nothing was nothing was so bad. Bottom 20, let's see the worst one. Tesla, I lost the most on Tesla and traded it four times. So Tesla just didn't just didn't work for me, man, this month. Whatever it is, what it is. Uh, but it's not surprising that the top 10, AMD and NVIDIA are in there. And even Berkshire, because that broke out to new all-time highs. Uh, those three stocks, common theme here, all-time high breaks, you know, playing momentum like I do, that's where my eyes should have been and they were. And that's, you know, I'm, I'm happy we, we capitalized on those. That's what I should have done. I don't have options. Uh, let's get into the setups. So here we go. We have some good stuff. Not surprising yet again. In an over or underlying, should I say? Underlying uptrend in the overall markets for the month. As I speak, we're in right near all-time highs. Very close. Um, we had traded more bull flags. And, and I, again, like I said, these are kind of blanket terms. It's a resistance, a consolidation break in a uptrend. That's all it is. I call it a bull flag, call it a bear flag. Maybe you don't like that name. Maybe you do. Maybe you're like, oh man, this guy's an idiot. I don't care. Then don't watch the video. Uh, bull flag, 17 trades there, six on the bear flag. And then we played one failed breakdown towards the end of the month, which made 174 bucks. Bear flags lost me 439, not surprising in, again, in Literally lost on every bear flag I played. Literally didn't have a single winner. Like even more data to back up my uh, my approach of if we are trending up big picture, I can't short. There's the 
the numbers, the risk reward, no, no, no. the probability is just not on my side through my data and through my thoughts anyway. Like without even looking at my data, I, I had, I, you almost, you know that going in. They, everyone tells you that, right? But here is the actual data, right? Consistently now showing that. Uh, on the long side, we had total profits of $1,716 and loss of six seventy. dollars So we netted positive there nicely and the failed breakdown play. So that's that. Mistakes, any mistakes? I did have one trade that was a Tesla that was technically not to system. I added or I traded it again after just losing on it because I thought my risk was a little bit off. Very small though. Happy that it was not a big deal. 63 bucks, okay, whatever. Not a big deal. Other, here's where I've been tracking the time frames of where I trade these on. So if you go back about a month ago, I believe, the five minute chart, we were dialed in. Like we were, we were. I, I, it's funny how this works, right? This is where I, I actually don't know if this is that important. Um, I stopped looking at the 30 minute chart. So I look at the one day, one hour, four hour, five minute, and even the weekly sometimes. But when I say I stopped looking at the 30 minute chart be, because it just, I had pretty bad data for a period of time that, and, and I, I just haven't liked that chart to begin with, so I might just get rid of that in general. Either way, the interesting component to this is that the five minute chart was my was my best time frame, I believe last month in December, I guess two months ago. And the one day chart was not as strong. It's not even close this month. Trading off the one day time frame, meaning that I'm looking for more like swing trades. I took 10 trades and we made $1,400 in, well, I guess I should say a little over $1,100 in net profits. The five minute chart net profits were actually almost $300 negative. So it's kind of funny how that works. Um, yeah. So daily charts for the win swings for the win, baby. Let's swing for the fences and that's it now, but let, it, it's, it's seemingly like swings is the play. So it's good stuff. And that's what I suspect. Just need more data on this again. Well, I've been tracking this for a couple of months, so I don't really have a large sample size to go back on and say, Oh man, over, you know, 500 trades, the daily chart is substantially better for me, right? You know, I'll, I'll get there. If I go back to, uh, let's go back to December. I believe I started calculating in December. Maybe it was before that, but let's just go back to December to the end of January. So then we'll have a little more data for this. So obviously we're, we're well, not obviously, we're green across everything. Okay, cool, great. But what's the best performing charts? One day by far, but then it's like, wait a second, look at the one week. You know, I've taken two trades off the one week and it, it, pound for pound, right? It's it's actually more profitable, right? So, and that's good to know as I get more data and have more trades. I just don't have enough trades on these guys for me to be like, this is statistically significant. But as I get there, great. So far, this this does bode well for the one week and the one day being really good timeframes to look at for and, and to take trades off of. So far, but you know, we'll... we'll gather more data, you know, and go from there. So there you guys have it. That's the update. The, I have a video, every trade recap I do, um, or at least if I don't forget, uh, I go into the prop firm account to show you guys where that's sitting at and all that stuff. This is just going to be the month recap, all the actual nitty gritty data and all that stuff. And I showed the prop firm, you know, I, I have a video from February 1st, if that's not out yet, It'll be out very, very shortly uh, where I go into the prop firm so you can see how the account's doing, where we are, and the targets and all that stuff. So there you guys have it. That is January's trade recap. Not the most exciting month. Not the most amazing month. Profit's profit. I don't care. Profit's profit. The plan for going forward is we're actually messing around with testing out a trade copier and then just kind of testing out on a smaller account how that works. And if it does work well, if slash when um, we hit the targets on the 25K prop firm account, what I, my plan is to do is go buy a $100,000 account and just trade the exact same size on the 25K account, but do a, a 4X copier, meaning not 4, not 4X, 4X multiple. So it'll just 4X the trade size multiply that by four 
to essentially say 25K account, 100K account times four. Yeah, cool. And then it will just trade that automatically when I take trades in the 25K account. So then we would kind of be playing with how that's how we can scale, you know, over time. Something for a different day. Because like I said, the beginning, right? 25K, cool, right? I'm not trading this maybe as aggressive as somebody would, somebody else would, or many people would. That's fine for me. I don't care. But if I if that's going to be my style and how I do things, then it makes it, you know, important to, you know, ultimately scale up to over 100K. Because if you're not, $400 is cool, but times that by four, okay, now we're talking $1,600 in profits on a 100K account. You know, on a month where I just didn't really feel like I was doing great, all right, that pays rent. You know what I mean? So like now, you know, now you're talking about more of a, a meaningful number. And that's, again, later this year, that's the plan. That's the, the goal. But sticking in the lane, no rushing. We're not trying to get there faster than we need to. Because again, then that's bringing in bad habits, doing things that are not going to be consistent, that I've been consistent for nine plus months. And I'm. once you have it and you've seen it and you felt it and you're in it, you don't want to let that go. You don't want to let that go. So. I don't care if I make 10 bucks next month. I don't care if I lose whatever next month, but as long as like it's within the reason that I'm in the, within the, the numbers and, and where I've been trading and the way I, I can manage risk, I, I'm good. I've had some red months, don't get me wrong, but they've been in a broader, stronger period, right? So there you guys have it. Thanks so much. I'll leave links to TradeZella and the broker that I, or the prop firm I use down below if you want to check them out. They currently offer, they're currently like one of the only ones I believe that does 100% payouts. So if you want it, cool. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.